Republican presidential candidate Vivek Ramaswamy is Vivek Ramaswamy has announced this week that he is running in the Republican primary. I am running for United States president to revive those ideals in this country. I want to be careful to avoid making the mistakes from the neocon establishment of the past. Was that real or was that Hillary Clinton made up this information to revive those common ideals? Reverse racism is racism. An open border is not a border. Parents determine the education of their children. Corrupt politicians in both parties spent trillions, killed millions, made billions for themselves. The climate change I stand before you today to announce my candidacy for President of the United States. Done. You have used hate, intimidation, fear, and it is intact. It strengthens the people. When it's mattered most, Vice President Harris has provided a decisive vote on some of the most historic bills of yeah. modern times. How dare they attack our fundamental rights? Kamala, as you all know, is smart, she's tough, she's experienced, she's a proven fighter for the backbone of this country. You can trust her because she has been doing the work. She has been doing the heavy lifting. She has been there for you, whether you know or not. Welcome back to today's video. In today's video, we're going to be looking at a Kamala Harris versus Vivek Ramaswamy election prediction. Now, as we get into today's video, guys, uh, do me a favor and hit that subscribe button down below. Uh, we're already at 100 subscribers. We've only posted around 17 videos on this channel. We just got started in this channel. We're going to reach 200 subscribers very soon. It really helps out if you click that subscribe button down below. really helps out with the algorithm. But taking a look here at our election prediction, this election prediction was actually made out of a vote from you guys on my community page. A majority of you, at least a plurality of you, wanted a Vivek Ramaswamy versus Kamala Harris election prediction. So that is why we are making this election prediction. But taking a look here at our electoral map here, we obviously have several redistricting issues, uh, which we have to think about as we're getting into the election, especially with regards to Maine 2nd Congressional District and the fact that some redistricting may make it more likely for Democrats or independent candidates to move about in that congressional district. Several electoral gains in the state of Florida, ranging all the way to the state of Texas, to California, losing an electoral vote, Pennsylvania losing an electoral vote, North Carolina gaining electoral an electoral vote. So several of these states here gaining or losing electoral votes, several key factors to note. Now, the, the electoral map in 2028 will be the same electoral map as of 2024, since the U.S. Dis, uh, US um, redistricting and things like that normally happen every 10 years when there's a census. Um, and the next census will be in 2030. So we will not have to worry with regards to any type of changes, which we may see on this map, at least any drastic changes. But taking a look here, we have a Vivek Ramaswamy versus Kamala Harris election prediction. Taking a look here at Kamala Harris's approval rating as of current, we see that her approval rating is at 35.9%. Now, that being said, if Donald Trump wins the presidency in 2024, her approval rating may go up, considering the fact that Donald Trump may not have a high approval rating, and her approval rating may go up a little bit. Although if President Biden wins re-election, her approval rating might not be the best. So you have to all obviously look at this in terms of who wins the 2024 election. We are obviously making this election prediction five years removed from the election. So we cannot predict uh, if future events such as who will win the 2024 uh, election. If Biden were to win the 2024 election, what are the results of his administration? If Trump were to win the 2024 election, how would his administration be viewed by the public? What will be the results of that administration? How about the 2026 midterms, the 2024 midterms? A lot of factors going into this. Trump's legal indictments, uh, Biden's age, the economy, inflation. A lot of issues which we do not simply know the answers to. But taking a look here, if she continues being vice president, her approval ring does not seem to be headed during a good path. And by the way, guys, this is not actually current. This has been going on for quite some time. Her approval rating since basically almost the beginning of her administration, since basically... Um, you could go around October 2021, October 2021, around the time, a month removed of the uh, Afghanistan withdrawal, which didn't go too much favorably with regards to the general public. You could see that her approval rating has been ranging from the low 40s, high 30s. Now it's been going down recently and it's been 
That being said, this is five years away from the election. But I'm just saying that if she continues to be vice president, it just the trends do not seem to be working out for her, okay? The trends have been pretty consistent. It's not been good, and it just seems to be getting worse for her. But that being said, if Donald Trump wins the 2024 election, then her approval rating may go up a little bit. So you had to consider that as well. Vivek Ramaswamy, again, I don't want to spend too much time on this. Um, um, only, only about half the country knows who he is even. But taking a look at this, he has a negative favorability rating of 5.6%, which isn't a lot, although only 50% of the country actually knows who he is. So I'm not really going to look at that too much. Again, guys, you can debate this Kamala poll. The reason why I think it's significant compared to the Vivek poll is because, first of all, more Americans know who Kamala Harris is than Vivek Ramaswamy. Okay, that's number one. Uh, so when people make their minds about someone, sometimes they just keep their minds straight. That's it. Although not that many Americans have actually made an opinion or do not know about who Vivek Ramaswamy is, Kamala Harris is the vice president of the United States. So if she wins re-election and then runs for, if, if she wins re-election with President Biden, her approval running might just continue on in a similar path. All right. So that's why I'm spending more time on Kamala Harris's um, elect election possibilities there. But taking a look here, there are several things to be made uh, with regards to that. But taking a look here at electoral map, again, guys, we're just going to be kind of speed running this. The reason why is because several of these states, we know how they're going to look. OK, so there are several states in 2028. I know many of you are going to say, oh, you might have a flip state. Montana might be a flip state, uh, different states like that. I'm going to go ahead, for the most part, I don't think anything too drastic is going to change. For example, going back to the 2016 map, all the states that I'm putting right now voted for the Republican or Democratic Party, respectively, uh, in 2016, in 2012, all the states I'm going to put here. So the idea that things are going to flip crazy in 2028, I don't think that's really going to occur. You may see some flips in states such as, I don't know, I don't know, let's go with Nevada or Ohio, possibly Ohio, I don't think so. But you may see some flips here and there. But for the most part, I think that you will see a very, very similar polarized map here. Several states here are obviously going to vote the same as they voted in previous elections. Even in 2028, I do not think that you're going to see a big difference. D.C., extremely liberal, guys. There's no way that Republicans even have a chance of taking that in the near future. Utah. I'm going to go ahead and give Alaska as being lean. Lean for Alaska. And then this is, remember, this is 2028. So for Florida, I'm going to be putting it as being lean, not likely. Lean for Florida, because I think the GOP's popularity is going to dwindle in that state. Texas is going to be going as tilt for the GOP. Tilt for the GOP. It'll be tilt for the GOP. You may argue that it might be tilt Democrat. Again, I'm going to go and put it as being tilt Republican. I think Ramaswamy is much more favorable than Donald Trump. With regards to Texans across the country, we are dealing with two totally different candidates here. Colorado and New Mexico going to go ahead and give those two states as being lean. Uh, sorry, not not lean. Yeah, yeah, sorry, sorry. Likely for Colorado and for New Mexico, we'll put it as being likely, likely as well. All right, and for the state of New Hampshire, we'll put it as being lean. Oh, sorry, likely. We'll put it as being likely. The reason why is because Ramaswamy kind of has an embodiment of Donald Trump. Donald Trump is not popular in the state of New Hampshire the embodiment might not be favorable. Taking a look at the state of Ohio, the state of Ohio, I'm going to go ahead and putting it as being lean, not likely. The reason why, I'll put it as being likely. The reason why is because of the fact that it is his, Ramaswamy's home state. So because of that, I think that he will be able to pull an upset in that state. It is his home state. Home states generally go to the candidates who live in that state. So I think that he'll be able to win in that state. Iowa, extremely conservative, voted for an abortion ban. Evangelical population, definitely going to Ramaswamy. Hard to imagine the fact that they voted for Barack Obama in 2008 and 2012. Just goes to show you the power that Barack Obama had over several minority voters. The state of Virginia, I'm going to go going ahead and giving as being lean, lean. I think it's going to be a lot less than previous, although I'm going to be going ahead and giving it as being lean. A lot less than in 2020. Maybe same. I'm predicting a little bit less than 2024 with regards to Democratic turnout, Democratic initiative in that state. Another uh, key district to be aware of here, Maine, one of Maine's congressional districts, will be going as the chill. Uh, sorry, lean, lean. The reason why is because of the fact that Donald Trump won this district in 2016 and 2020. Redistricting has occurred, although I think Ramaswamy is much more favorable in that particular district. And I think by 2028, I think that it will be lean Republican. For our next few states here, I do think that the states that I have unbolded, uh, not colored in yet, 
are the states that are going to be the most important. Nevada, Arizona, Georgia, North Carolina, Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin, and Minnesota. These are going to be the most important states. Now, I'm including Minnesota in that group because of the fact that the Donald Trump only lost in that state by, I think, 1.6% in 2016, an extremely small margin by Donald Trump in 2016. It really goes to show you the power that these Rust Belt states here, they can either benefit or assail an individual with regards to their electoral advantages. I'm going ahead and giving Minnesota as being tilt for the Democrats, tilt for the Democrats. The reason why is because it has voted consistently Democrat. It has voted consistently Democrat in previous elections. Joe Biden won in the state by 7%. I think that is going to be a little bit more difficult, although I think it's going to be tilt for the Democrats. The state of Nevada, if Ramos, Vivek Ramaswamy is the nominee, I'm going to be going ahead and giving Nevada as being tilt. It has not voted for Republicans since 2004. Now, I know one of you guys was saying in one of my previous videos, for example, one of you guys wrote in the comments, uh, I don't know the name of the individual, but one of you guys wrote in the comments that I wasn't being consistent in the way I was giving elections. And that is partly true. I'm going to be trying to be more consistent from now on with regards to how I give the elections since I was somehow sometimes saying that it was based off of previous elections. Sometimes I was basing everything based off of current polling data. I'm going to be trying to be more consistent. The reason I'm giving Nevada, it's a very clear and concise, concise reason. Rock, Donald Trump only lost in Nevada by two by 2.6 percent, around 2.6 to 2.4 percent. 2.4 to 2.6 percent was the range in which Donald Trump was in in 2016 and 2020 with regards to the margins that he lost. I believe that he improved in 2020. I think the Vivek Ramaswamy is a lot more popular. The GOP has been getting a lot more support, even amongst Donald Trump. Donald Trump is actually leading Joe Biden in some polls for 2024. I think that the Republicans are going to be much more popular in 2028 in the state of Nevada. And then it's going to go for Nevada. Some people are already predicting it for Donald Trump in 2024. I think personally that it might go for Donald Trump in 2024. I don't want to keep, I don't want to put that as being a fact, but I do think that it is a possibility. I'm going to be going ahead and get to, giving it to Vivek Ramaswamy. Vivek Ramaswamy is an outsider, okay? You have to recognize this. Donald Trump was an outsider in 2016, which is why he was able to flip so many states. Remember, M Michigan voted for Donald Trump by, voted for Barack Obama by 9.5% in 2012. It flipped and voted for Donald Trump in 2016. That's about a 10-point flip, 10% of voters. Now, that being said, you could argue that turnout for Hillary Clinton was lower, although it still is a 10% flip. You deny it or not, it's a 10% flip. Why? Because mainly because Donald Trump was an outsider, and you could argue, you know, his policies um, with regards to the Rust Belt, but he was an outsider. So I think that the outsider phenomenon, which you're seeing, within the Republican Party, within the Democratic Party, among independent voters, among voters who do, not, who do not care about politics, is something to note. And I think that phenomenon will be important. I'm going ahead and give Nevada as being tilt for Ramaswamy. Again, guys, you can argue, obviously, I don't know what's going to happen in the next five years exactly. I do not know the results of the 2024 midterms, the 2026 midterms, how the country views Republicans, the Republicans' positions, whether or not they'll change in 2028. And those individual ideas. Arizona. Arizona. So if Biden wins the... So already Arizona is not very... I, I doubt that Arizona is going to go for Joe Biden. The reason why is because of the fact of his immigration policies that are not really favorable among individuals living near the border, especially in Texas, especially in states like Arizona. All that being said, you could see that Biden's approval winning. Biden and Kamala are together, you know, uh, when the vice president... The, and the president are together, you have a idea with regards to the fact that if one side does wrong, it's the other side's fault as well with regards to vice presidents and presidents. I'm going and giving it as being tilt for the Republicans. Kamala Harris is, does not have a higher approval rating, okay, guys? She has 35%, okay? Now, that being fair, she did have 48.3% when she began, which is not as high as, you know, she was the first uh, person of color to become the vice president. So you may expect that to be higher. For example, Barack Obama, when he came to the presidency, he had about a 60% approval rating. Kamala Harris, 48%. It went down quick, okay? Not quick. Yeah, it went down pretty quick. From June June 2021 to November, it went down relatively quickly. But that's for that particular state there, Arizona. For next state in the state of North Carolina, we're going to go ahead and giving it as being tilt. Donald Trump won there in 2012-2016. I think it's going to go for the Republicans. Donald Trump won in that state by a relatively good, uh, relatively small margin, 1.6% in 2020, in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic. 
The state of Georgia, I'm going to go ahead and giving it as being tilt. If Vivek Ramaswamy is the nominee, I think I'm going to go going ahead and giving it as being tilt. It was a solid red state for quite some time. Last time I voted a Democrat, what was, I believe, 1972, 1976, sorry, 1976, other than the 2020 election, voted for Joe Biden by an extremely small margin. Georgia is definitely a state which Democrats can eye on. The Atlanta area, that black population there in the state of Georgia, maybe something which Democrats can go back to, although I doubt that they're going to be able to win in that state. For our next state here, the state of Wisconsin, I'm going ahead and giving it as being tilt. It's the most conservative of the four Rust Belt states. I think that's going to be going to Vivek Ramaswamy. The state of Michigan is going to be going tilt to um, Kamala Harris, the most liberal of the three Rust Belt, Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania. It's going to be going ahead and going ahead and giving as being tilt. Manufacturing jobs, I do believe, um, has been relatively increased under Joe Biden. It hasn't been doing that bad under Joe Biden. For the with regards to the state of Pennsylvania, it's gonna be going ahead and giving it as being tilt. Donald Trump won in this state in 2016. I think that Vivek Ramaswamy can win in this state. Again, guys, I'm not trying to be biased, but this is how I believe this is the election is actually gonna turn out. If Vivek and Kamala are the nominees for 2028. Nebraska, one of his congressional districts, it was ext- it voted, it's pretty it has been voting Republicans for quite some time. They did not vote for Donald Trump in 2020, especially that Omaha region extensively. Um, extensively anti-Trump. All that being said, when you look at the actual district with regards to the House of Representatives, in the House of Representatives, actually Republicans have taken control in 2022. I think the fact of the matter is that the people in that one district in Nebraska hate Donald Trump, not actually GOP policies or GOP general candidates. So because of that, I'm going, going, going to be going ahead and giving that as being tilt. So that being said, we have Vivek Ramaswamy at 298 um we have the democrats at 240 electoral votes if you like that video guys do me a quick favor and hit that subscribe button down below we're gonna reach 200 subscribers soon so do me a favor and hit that subscribe button down below by the way guys if you like the intro video for today's video the intro video that i put at the very beginning of today's video make sure you write that down in the comments i don't know whether you guys 100 percent like intro videos or not tell me whether or not i should continue making these intro videos they, they do take some time but if you guys really like them then i'll make sure to um create those videos for every one of my election predictions and go to my community page to vote for my next video, what video you guys want me to post next. And I'll see you in the next video.